Hello. Fields of victory. Fields of value. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Greetings of peace, love, and happiness. Welcome to Chilparko Podcast, where we have the real talk about the power within. No fakeness, no artificiality, just the way it is. Calling a spade a spade. And this is about, you know, our theme basically for the month of June on Chilparko Podcast has been all about holistic wellness. How can you keep yourself absolutely happy, healthy, positive. That's so very important. And you know, there are so many ways that you can do that. And one such way is by humor. In this world where, you know, racism persists, hatred, uh, greed, despite all these things happening, you know, there are still Loads of people out there who believe in spreading smiles, positivity, sanguinity, helping others enhance their self-worth, understand their uniqueness from within, use their skills to their advantage, empower themselves and empower others with their uniqueness through their unstoppable quality. And that is what makes them so special. And that is what we're talking about today. We have Madam Jeannie Rapsted all the way from the United States of America. And yes, she stays in this beautiful place, Indiana. And uh, she loves art, you know, she loves marmalade, her cat. But more than that, she is a theater person, a comedian, an actress. Uh, she is also a global educator. She teaches uh, speech, you know, genie speech. And uh, she also has her own organization of which she is the president. And you must have seen that in the in the poster. Yes, yes, yes. We have put all about her there. But yes, the most important thing is that she is a wonderful, versatile human being, very enigmatic, very exotic, very enlightening. And she <laughs> believes in enriching and empowering others with all that uniqueness that is there within her. And you know, there's no fakeness. She is just the way she is and the best part she's also called the lady with the hats and you can see her hat you know in podcast after podcast in conference after conference she's come up with the most amazing uh, hats you know and I still to date haven't been able to decide which one did I like the best the one she wore on Mother's Day the one she wore on the wireless connect, the one she wore when she was teaching in Chilparko educational class. I still haven't been able to make up my mind. And today, you know, the color of red, the color of passion, the color of love, the color of my God, creativity. That is what she's wearing today. But before I keep on blabbering and talking, a big, big welcome to you, Madam Jeannie. How are you today? Thank you very much. I am delighted to be here. Thank you for all of the kind words you said about me. I really appreciate that. And for the viewers in the audience, yes, I am uh, a hat lady. I have branded myself <laughs> here in Northwest uh, Indiana as the classy dame in the hat. I have... Uh, that you surely are. <laughs> I have uh, 200 hats and I wear them. I actually wear them. So it isn't something that I have just buy hats and stick out there. I so thought there were 150 hats. They become 200 now? Yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm not even ashamed to say it. Because there are sometimes when I go, when are you going to stop? I ask myself. When, and then I go, no, I can't because I don't have one like this. I don't have one like that. So right <laughs> now, I, I am up there uh, around pretty close to 200, if not more. And uh, that's how I used to have uh, when we first met each other a year or so ago, 155. Yeah, but, that's what I remember. Those days, uh, gone. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, uh, I just bought six new summer hats, some new six new summer parties wow. last two months. And mm -hmm. uh, 
So I, I, it's because I don't want to wear the same hat every time I appear on screen. So, you know, it goes bigger. Oh but my God. Uh, so much for classiness and sophistication. <laughs> you don't want to repeat the same hat. That's amazing. That's amazing. But, um, Yes, it's always wonderful to have these nice conversations with you. So um, since today we're going to be talking about humor and holistic wellness, how yeah. can laughter actually help in holistic well-being? People don't realize it, but you know, it definitely does help. How it helps, what are the benefits, how can we make life more enjoyable, how can we spread positivity through humor, all this we will be talking with Madam Jeannie today. So, yes. um, Madam Jeannie, first of all, let's begin with a humorous joke from your side. Okay, I, I went through my joke file. Okay. And, and I pulled out a few things. Uh -huh. Because, because I, I have a couple of really nice stories, but I have a couple, <laughs> I have a couple of shorter ones. Uh-huh. Okay. So this is, uh, lots of times we, we can get uh, funny stories out of a marriage situation, okay? <laughs> so here, here, is, here is one, uh, husband and wife having problems, they go to a marriage counselor and the marriage uh -huh. counselor says to the husband, your wife complains that you never buy her flowers. Uh -huh. And the husband said, well, to tell you the truth, I didn't even know that she sold flowers. <laughs> I mean, the guy. Oh, is out. goodness. So now here's another marriage joke. So the husband and the wife, they have a quarrel and the wife calls up her mother. Mm -hmm. And she says, he fought with me again, mama. I'm going to come and live with you. And mom says, no, darling. He must pay for his mistake. I am coming to live with you. Ooh, this is, this is, <laughs> I tell you, this is the icing on the cake. This surely is one good one. The mama says, I'm going to come and live with you. Wow, this is amazing. I love this. I love this. Nothing like a good, good belly laugh to shake off the flat mood. I tell you, you know, if you were going through any kind of anxiety, depression, weren't feeling good, I bet this joke, you know, really put you in splits. And um, welcoming to humor. Coming to humor and uh, wellness, how do they yeah. go together, Madam Jeannie? Well, I'm just going to touch. You want to share a screen? I'm going to go into it in deep dive. Okay. Okay. So, just off the top of my head, uh, th there are many positive effects of laughter on the body. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, laughter uh, raises our mood. It can help decrease pain. It can improve the function of our blood vessels with blood flow, and uh, it reduces the risk of having a heart attack. So now let's go a little bit deeper. It is a proven fact, and this is information that I've gotten from the famous Mayo Clinic of Minnesota here in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, that laughter is one of the best medicines there are because it really can improve our cardiovascular health. Laughter improves, as I mentioned, the blood flow, reduces the blood pressure because of that. It increases oxygenation. It also exercises our diaphragm and abdominal muscles. Laughing a lot boosts our immunity. Laughter increases the number of antibody producing T cells, which can help reduce uh, the incidence of coughs and colds. Mm -hmm. Reduced pain, which I just mentioned. Laughter releases endorphins, which can temporar temporarily relieve pain. It also reduces level of the stress hormone, cortisol, mm -hmm. which can minimize pain and inflammation. Laughter reduces stress. We just laugh it off. You know, we can't take everything too serious. And laughter decreases stress hormones and puts you in a better mood. I'm going to give you a little personal story. Yesterday, two things were happening. I was preparing for this uh, presentation today, but I also uh, had to run to the grocery store. 
And I just went over there uh, with a pure heart and pure mind to buy some groceries for the week or so. I get into this really unpleasant altercation with a man in the supermarket who was an absolute psychotic bully. <laughs> and I am, I am at the age in my life where, you know, I tell you, stop bothering me. Leave me alone. I mean, I don't just sit there and take it like some abused woman. But he was uh, just being his worst self. So I ended up calling the police. When I left the supermarket, I was very unhappy about this incident. And uh, so I came home and I said, okay, Jeannie, you have to put this aside because A, you can't change who he is and what he does to people. And you responded in a way that didn't make you a victim. And now you have to put together this program. So let's see how we can lift our mood, which we're going to talk about, through humor. So I started going through my joke files. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about that uh, in detail in just a few minutes. But I started going through my joke files and I was reading one little joke after another and I started laughing. And I started <laughs> feeling better. And, and so this horrible incident that I had been through a couple of hours before was really compressing and minimizing down into nothing. Yeah. You know, not that I'm happy it happened, but the fact of the matter it is, is I'm not walking around wounded and, you know, unable to think about anything else. And so I uh, really enjoyed reading through my joke file. And I'm going to share why a joke file is important for anybody who presents. Okay. I do a lot of presentations as you do. Uh, it's impossible to reinvent the wheel every single time we are called upon to do a presentation. <laughs> so I, I create uh, reference and resource files so that if I need to talk about this particular topic, I can pull something up and put something together. And I have been keeping a joke file ever since I used to do stand-up comedy. Have you prepared it manually? Uh, I have it in paper and I have it online. Okay, wow. Because when I first started my joke file, it was back in the days when people used to email jokes to us, right? Ah, uh, right, right, I, yeah. You, you'd open up your email and there, <clears throat> excuse me, there'd be a joke and you'd laugh at it. <laughs> well, I print it out and I put it in there, <clears throat> excuse me. And so then over time, I began creating electronic files. So I have jokes about aging. I have this, that, and the other thing. Like for here, you know, I do presentations to older people a lot. So here's here's an example of one of the punchlines that I use. You know, we talk about when we're older, lots of times our health or ache and pain. And I tell my audience, you know, I have reached the age where every part of my body has its own doctor. And <laughs> they laugh. Because they've got a heart doctor, they've got a knee doctor, they've got a podiatrist, they've got, you know, but it, it, all kinds of doctors. And so that gets a laugh. So the first time I delivered that line years ago, I said, oh, this one works. So I put it in the joke file, right? So if I ever need to be in front of older people, I can, you know, pull that out because we can identify with it, you know, uh, there are lots of times, like, I'm going to give you a little joke story right now, okay? I this love one, stories. This one I pulled out of my joke file last night, and it gave me a chuckle. And I had kind of forgotten about this particular story. So it was fun for me to remind myself. So anyway, here is the story. Fred is 32 years old, and he is still single. One day, a good friend asked him, Fred, why aren't you married? Can't you find a woman who would be a good wife? And Fred said, well, actually, I found many women that I've wanted to marry. But when I bring them home to meet my parents, my mother doesn't like them. Oh. Fred said, well, I've got the perfect solution, Fred. Just find a girl who's just like your mother. A few months later, they meet again, and the friend says, did you find the perfect girl yet? And did your mother like her? And with a frown on his face, Fred says, yes, 
I found the perfect girl. She was just like my mother. And you were right. My mother liked her very, very much. And the Fred said, well, then what's the problem, Fred? Fred said, my father doesn't like her. <laughs> now, I have a, with this. Oh, my father doesn't like her. Oh, goodness gracious me. So he has two of the same kind. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. I hadn't read this story or told this story in a long time because I was, but because I was digging through my joke file and I found it and I said, this would probably be. So uh, you see the way I am laughing. I'm sure everyone who probably had a bad day today, I'm talking to all of you who are tuned in uh, in the live or who would watch the live later on even, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, if you've had a bad day, if you've, you're just feeling depressed, you're just feeling that, oh, life is not good enough. I, I'm sure, you know, that story just put you in a good mood. You just had a good laugh and you sh shook off your, uh, you know, your blues away. I think that is the power and that is the miracle of laughter. Laugh. That's why they say, you know, I mean, just laugh. And, you know, in yoga, Madam uh, Jeannie, there is actually a laughter therapy which says that just laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Because that opens up your lungs. That makes you feel better. That makes you look young. Uh, that makes you feel confident. Uh, there are so many things that laughter does and the and the irony is that we underestimate its powers. Yes, we we really have to recognize the benefit it does to us so yeah. that when we feel distressed, like I did yesterday, we can direct ourselves away from that to a, a lighter mood and say, you know, I deserve to be happy. I, I can't let uh, yeah. some fool that I run into in the supermarket, you yeah. know, ruin two or three days of my life. So yeah. uh, this is one of the reasons why, uh, as I said, I keep joke files uh, when I'm called upon to do a different presentation to a different group of people. I go through the file and say, oh, OK. OK, so let's say I'm going to be talking to a mixed group of people, men and women, uh, girls and boys of all ages, you know, and we're talking about maybe, um, you know, outdoor activity so here's a little joke okay very short so <laughs> i love jokes we always, yeah we, we, ready, always talk, and gentlemen. <laughs> we always talk about how when you go fishing you're not guaranteed of catching anything right but you go because it's a relaxing experience so here is a joke of fishing from my joke file two men are fishing at a stream the first man says to the other, catch anything yet? Second man said, nope, just washing worms. <laughs> do, you, do you fish with worms in India? Because we do that here. But no, I'm not. I don't catch any fish. I'm just washing Oh, God. <laughs> I, have, I have tears in my eyes. You know, I love that joke file of yours. Uh, uh, you know, I think that's something really precious that you have. Because, you know, whenever you're down and out, it's like, you know, taking out old photographs, joke files, uh, maybe listening to songs. I think these all uh, lead to wellness. You know, they, they make one feel good. So even if one is um, completely upset with life or maybe feels that life is not being good to them, I think these things just put you back on track you know they make you feel that life is wonderful and you shouldn't let these small things bother you like you know your incident at the groceries with that awful man that bully who was trying to bully you I think you know they do get to us we do say to ourselves that we shouldn't let get affected by these small botherations but you know still we're humans and we do get affected but again then yeah. you know it's our choice don't you think so madam Jeannie? it's I, our I, choice to keep on letting that affect us or do something to get us out of that mood so old photographs songs dancing and yes. and you know i think joke joke book a joke file i think that's an excellent idea and whoever said that you know you only need to go to the internet there's something about a joke file if you have it manually that's why i asked you that question because there's always something good about having a diary in your hand writing something in and then going back 
and remembering why you wrote that something, you know, which was funny. I think that that is a different kind of a feeling altogether. It puts you on mode euphoria. I always say that. Like you, you're sharing so many things, but you were going to share some story again. I, I wanted to um, just mention for those of us who speak uh, for a living or at work, maybe not as a designated speaker, but we communicate with our coworkers, our supervisors, whatever. It's always nice when you walk into the committee meeting to have something to say to the people that are there. And so I'm going to tell you a story that's from my life. And it has to do with, um, and I've, I've shared this story at, at my humor workshops for business people, because I talk about how oftentimes management and staff look at exactly the same incident through different lenses. Management sees it one way, staff sees it another way, and it's the same incident. And this is an absolutely true story. Years and years and years ago, when I was in university for this first time at Louisiana State University in New Orleans, um, about two miles down the highway from the university was a Sears Roebuck and Company store. That's a big retailer here in the United States. And many, many of the students from the university had part-time jobs there. I was one of them, five to nine. And, uh, you know, so I had classes all day long and in between classes, I try and do some homework. And then I go to Sears and I'd work from five to nine. And back in those days, when it was time to close the store, uh, the store would send out a buzzer. And that would tell the shoppers we're closing. So if you're going to buy something, wrap it up now uh, at the cashier or whatever. And so then um, in those days, you know, mostly cash, not so many much credit cards like we use today. And so those of us who were working in the department would take the cash drawer and we'd take it over to accounting and it would be checked out. And I worked in the little girls department. And uh, so my supervisor always made me take the cash drawer to the accountant after work. And so naturally, since everybody's taking their cash drawer, sometimes it's, uh, nine five nine ten nine fifty nine twenty before i can leave and you know i'm tired i wanted to go home so one day i said to my su supervisor i complained in this whiny little voice why do i always have to take the money and she said her name was mrs hotard and she said because you don't steal because you don't because she said to me, because you don't steal. Uh. So I said to her, well, my in my mind, all I wanted was to leave at nine o'clock. And my coworkers who were stealing got to leave at nine. But because I didn't steal, I had to stay late. So I said to her, well, if I start stealing, can I leave it, leave at nine? Okay, <laughs> same incident. Two different lenses. Management says, we have a kid here who's honest, so let her take the cash. And I'm saying, I want to leave at nine. I'm tired, but I have to, you know, so to me, I looked at it like a punishment. But that story gets a lot of laughs because- Yeah, it does. Because- you I'm can, sure. You can see <laughs> how uh, my point is made. Management and staff don't always see the same incident through the same lens. And so there's a place for humor if you're teaching, if you're trying to teach uh, somebody to recognize that. Um, I want to reinforce, as I said, the notion about the joke file and you should start it today. If you have one, great. If you don't, then you can start it online. You can do it in paper form, what, however you're comfortable. I have both. And then I also have joke books that I bought way back in the day when I was doing stand-up comedy. Um, Madam Jeannie, some people yeah. would be very lazy to actually create a joke file. So can they have a lot of, uh, yeah, because <laughs> they love to procrastinate. But yeah. you know, um, 
What about uh, having joke books? A lot of joke books by your bedside. So before going to bed, I mean, they say that if you, before going to bed, you read a good joke, you go yeah. off to sleep in a very positive manner and you wake up with a happy face. Is that true? Well, I think that it, whatever works for you is great because sometimes I like to flip through the joke books and see, uh, you know, especially I have some that are very old. So I have Milton Berle's favorite jokes. I mean, Milton Berle, your audience have probably never heard of him. The man has been dead for 20 years, you know, and but he was one of the really famous comics in America. And when oh. I was growing up, he was on television all the time. You know, this cup that I have here that I'm drinking my beverage out of, this is uh, from the Red Skelton Museum. And Red Skelton was a very famous uh, comedian and comic actor in the United States. And when I was a, a child growing up, he had a TV show, 25 years he was on TV. <laughs> and he did sketch comedy, which is what I ended up doing in my life after, uh, after stand-up comedy. But he did a lot of facial expressions and, and he, as I said, did character sketches. And so I finally got to go visit his museum in Vincennes, Indiana in 2018. It was a, a marvelous experience. But I remember some of the punchlines that he gave way back in the day. And you uh -huh. know, it's, it's valid to use it. I mean, he's not using them anymore. The man's been long gone. But the impression that a joke uh, makes you can put into your joke file and um so and if you don't if you don't prepare for presentations like let's say you're in business here's another story from my joke file that i use in in when i'm teaching wow. my, my humor workshops so i have a friend uh he went to high school with me so this story goes back 40 years. And as a young man, he was in a franchise where it was a combination um, a car wash and gasoline station, and it was a national franchise. And this particular year, when he was about 30 years old, he had done very, very well with his business. And so the franchise invited select people from all of the United States to meet at the Radisson Hotel in New York. And he, they were given awards, okay? And so uh, this story is so wonderful that I, when I heard it, I said, okay, I'm going to be uh, sharing that again <laughs> in the future. So here's the story. Hmm. The first franchise holder that received the award was a self-described good old boy from where in the heck is Odessa, Texas? And so this is how the man introduced himself. So he got a big laugh because in America, good old boys are from the South and they have a certain charm about them. And Odessa, Texas is not exactly the most famous place in the United States. So he <laughs> introduces himself, I'm a good old boy from where in the heck is Odessa, Texas? And the audience just, <laughs> laughs and apparently he was a good speaker because my friend uh, Ron told me that he had one joke line after another so during his wow. acceptance speech during his acceptance speech the audience was howling with laughter and when it came time for him to close his remarks and leave the stage the audience thunderous applause they're laughing they're laughing they're laughing now they introduce Ron to receive his award and my friend Ron was so inexperienced in this field that he did not even know that he was supposed to have an acceptance speech. All he had prepared to say was, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was it. And so now he follows this guy who was a complete audience hit. And so he comes across as this completely boring guy. And Ron told me that 40 years later, he still wakes up in the middle of the night and said, why didn't I say something? <laughs> now, that, that would not be me because I would be preparing my remarks, you know, uh -huh. because I have the training and this is what I teach other people to do. So I wouldn't be caught, you know, uh, sort of unawares like that. 
this is the kind of thing that I teach clients who come to me. Jeannie, I have a big presentation. What should I do? And then I give them my best guidance and uh, they come to contact me later and say everything went really well. But my friend Ron's story really resonated. Uh, I told it uh, at a workshop that I was giving at one of, uh, this is a Fortune, International Fortune 100 company, um, Caterpillar Inc., and they're in West Lafayette and they make big uh, earth moving tractors and things like that. And so I, I was hired to come down and give my workshop to people who are salesmen. So I wanted the point that I was making to them is that you out in the field with your clients, you are your company. You represent Caterpillar Inc. And so when you show up, do not be boring. Come with a personality. Come uh, make people feel at ease. It's going to improve your sales. If you just show up, oh, I'm here, I'm whatever, uh, probably won't make much sales. They probably will forget about you the minute you drive off. So um, this young man who was the good old boy from Odessa, Texas, he had learned that skill. And so everybody will remember him forever. My friend Ron still remembers him 40 years later. So this is the kind of thing that preparation brings and going to your joke file. So the young man probably said, oh, I got a really big laugh on that. Where in the heck is Odessa, Texas joke? Let me bring that to the next one. And that's the reason why I have a joke file. Not only jokes that you hear and punchlines that you think you can use, but things that happen to you by accident. I think, oh, that worked. I'm going to write that down, use it again. I, I do that all the time. You cannot reinvent the wheel every single time you write a speech. I don't have the time, you know, to sit down. And so I have to call from this file, that file, whatever. And uh, so far, it's worked really well for me. And I suggest that all of you who speak do that too. And if you are an educator, you owe it to your students to be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously, I, I have, you know, been in school a long time, have a master's degree. I've been through all kinds of classes with various uh, teaching proficiencies. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, just because you hold a degree doesn't mean that you can speak effectively to people. You know, it just... It's just not true. You actually have to work on that part of your professional presentation. You have to actually spend some time on that. So um, those are the kinds of things that I try to help uh, you know people understand. We put together a presentation, and there's two aspects of that. There's the content, you know, who, what you want to say to who, and the delivery of that content. And both of them are really, really important. And there are a great many things that uh, comprise uh, the, a good delivery. Uh, in addition to, you know, and I've taught a master class a couple of times on this very topic. First master class is on content. Second is on delivery and how we can make our words come to life so that uh, the audience can resonate with the content and, you know, leave there with something meaningful. Because I, I want to just impress upon all of you who speak in your job. Do not phone in your message. You know what that means? Phone it in, blah, 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 blah. No, bring <laughs> to the light. That's what you have to do. You owe it to the listener. You Absolutely. Know? When you get to the point where people are falling asleep listening to you, you know that you have failed. You have failed. Yeah, you are a complete failure. Madam Chidi, tell me, you know, um, in, in jobs, like, you know, in our professional setup, uh, don't you think people who have more of a humorous side to them, and even while, you know, talking about the challenges that they have in their professional uh, area, work area, they're dealing with everyone with, you know, th those kind of humorous lines, or they have a smile on their face, doesn't it make the atmosphere, which is which, which could get very, very tough and claustrophobic at times, 
um it can it can you know when every when the atmosphere is so stifling if you have someone who can just infuse that room with some laughter some humorous lines i think it makes even the uh, the work life at that moment you know everybody starts um, sharing a good laugh there's a good laugh and everybody starts working more productively i think it works it, it does happen what do you have to say to that I think that a congenial work environment is more productive and it results yeah. in more profitability for the company because people who enjoy where they work, where they feel safe, where, where they're happy. Yes. Where it's not an oppressive environment where they're not working under some narcissistic. Oh, that, wow. You said it. You said it. Yeah where they just have the encouragement that we're all here to do a good job, to represent Absolutely. the company. And uh, then they begin to trust the environment, trust their coworkers, trust their supervisors. And these are all major components in profitability. Because if you create a hostile work environment, like some narcissists do. Do, not work, some. I would say 80%. We just have 20% genuine souls, Madam Jeannie, yeah, like you. Yeah, yeah, Let yeah. me just say that. Let me just tell you that. 20%, okay, yeah. <laughs> because what happens if you create an oppressive environment, your talented people spend most of their time looking for their next job. Yeah, you absolutely. Cannot, you cannot create loyalty in a place where people are abused especially the smart ones. They'll say to themselves, I have to work for a living. I might as well work for a living in a place where I'm happy, where I'm- Where I'm celebrated. Yeah. And, where and I'm all, celebrated and not tolerated. And all of that mindset is part of holistic health. Yes. Because you cannot be healthy in an environment where you're miserable and oppressed and where- People are just uh, toxic. This Absolutely. Is, yes. You know, there there is, a, a, you know, an old, old expression. That I, this is not something I, I thought of. But, you know, every now and then when we walk down the sidewalk, we see a little dandelion flower that has managed to find a place to live in the crack, right? Yeah. And And because I learned a long time ago, that where the conditions for life exist, life can exist. So if you are creating a, an environment that is so toxic that no real creative life can exist, you will not have new ideas. Absolutely. You will not have new product development. You will not be able to retain talented people hmm. because they are looking for the light, for the place where they can grow just like that dandelion in the crack in the street. Absolutely. You know? and so uh, this is the reason why it's so important for those of us who find ourselves in leadership positions, whether it's reluctantly or we're seeking it, then we have to develop the maturity to make us worth following, if you understand what I'm saying in it. So true, so true. I mean, and very rightly and very powerfully said that, you know, um, one cannot survive in a toxic environment. One cannot be happy. And then there is no point. Uh, there won't be any productivity. If so, so supposing it's some kind of a business place or something, there'll be no sales. And because yeah. everybody's so unhappy over there, but whereas if you have happy people all around, somehow, you know, the company's sales will boost up They'll probably give loads of bonuses to every member of the staff. Life will seem, I mean, work will not seem work. It will be more like a passion. But where you try to put down because of your own narcissism, and, I, and I'm sure that everyone who's listening and they are in such kind of a toxic environment, please make that move and just come out of it. You have your own self-worth and your self-integrity and you cannot live in a place that makes you unhappy. Happiness is important. Happiness is an inside job. Happiness will make you be more successful in life than a toxic environment. So just leave it. Take that bold step and leave it. 
that that yeah. is something you can do for your own holistic wellness and there's one more thing um, madam genie i feel that humor i mean i would like to ask this from you don't you think that humor also builds up a lot of soft skills for example resilience for example patience for example discipline tenacity how to control your reactions what do you have to say on this uh, i agree with everything you said and the most important thing to me add all those up and it comes to one really necessary quality and that's confidence see i taught at university uh, to students coming in right out of high school and i was teaching the fundamentals of communication is a required course by the state of indiana every single student that goes to college junior college university they have to have this class. And despite the fact that this was required and that industry uh, says that the number one soft skill that they want in new hires are effective communication skills, my students told me they don't get any training at all. Less than 15% of them had ever given a speech in high school, in a social organization, at their church or place of worship, they had no skills whatsoever. So one of the things that I did when I understood this is that I started developing speech craft exercises and the whole couple of first rounds were all humor based. Because when a student gets a laugh, they feel good and they go, oh God, that wasn't so bad. And the next time they get the second lab and pretty soon they're beginning to feel like, hey, I can stand up in front of these people and I won't die of embarrassment. You know, I might get a <laughs> laugh out of this. And so humor really helps in, I have found, and, and I really, really sincerely suggest to all people who are teaching students who have no speaking or communication skills, try to incorporate some humor into your lesson plan. You see, I added these speech craft exercises into the curriculum. It's not part of the curriculum. And the chair of the department said to the other people teaching, you ought to stop by Jeannie's class and see what she's doing. Okay. So um, I felt that was a, a real you know, round of applause for me because when I got my end of the semester reviews from the students, you know, how they give you an evaluation. And they talked about those speech craft exercises really, really helped me. They really helped me. I wish we had more of those. And, and so I'm telling you that laughter, getting a laugh helps build confidence. And everything else that you mentioned, the resilience and everything else, the ability to think outside the box, the ability to do, um, critical thinking, all of these come from confidence. You see, uh, that's the reason why I like to start there with building the confidence, the effective communication skills. Wow, that's what I'll say. So it's basically humoring your way to well-being. That's what we learned today. Yeah, yeah. humoring your way to well-being, to holistic wellness. And it's so important because if you're feeling good, like Madam Jeannie said, if you're feeling confident about yourself, then you can achieve the impossible. I mean, then nothing is unachievable in life. You can just do it. Just hold on, hold on to your talents, hold on to humor. Something doesn't happen, just humor yourself and uh, you'll find a way out. There'll, there'll be something that make you, maybe some funny word that you say will make you, will give you the answer to whatever challenge you're facing. I mean, it's happened with me many times and it's worked many times and I think it will work with you as Madam Jeannie also said. And um, it was a brilliant, brilliant session, brilliant conversation, a humorous conversation with all those jokes and joke story <laughs> and that joke file, that's wonderful. 
Um, I did. Uh, I remember you did share something about a joke file earlier when we did that uh, education class, and I did start, but then I somewhere left it, and I'm going to begin it all over again. And what I'll do is I'll just copy paste, and I'll put some nice jokes over there so that you know whenever I'm feeling down and out because. Everyone does feel down and out when you hear a nasty word spoken against you, especially when you know it's not true. Right, Madam Jeannie? Yes, so it yes. hurts. Or you yes. come across someone who's being silly, like you came across someone at the grocery store who was being nasty, who was being a bully. And I think, again, humor yourself. Humor yourself and maintain your holistic wellness. Maintain your sanity. Because you matter. You are unique. You are unstoppable. You are tenacious. And you are beautifully timeless the way you are. <laughs> Madam Jeannie, thank you so much. But before we go, let's end the session, this our podcast, with one humorous joke that everyone can just think about and laugh. And then again, humor themselves towards their well-being. Okay, I'm, I'm going to end here with Another little story, and I, mm -hmm. I won't try to make it too long, but this is one of my favorite stories because it's just a warm-hearted little laugh. So uh, here's the story. Uh, a woman who was working in her front garden and was curious when this strange dog started coming over to her house each day, and he would climb up on her uh, covered porch area, and he would sleep for a couple of hours, and then he would leave. And um, he seemed very tired, but uh, he didn't seem to be in any way uh, aggressive or unhappy, but she was curious about him. So she put a little note on his collar that said, your dog comes to my house every day and takes a, an, a couple of hour nap on my porch. So I just want you to know that he's, uh, this is where he goes when he, when he leaves your house. And so the dog came back the next day with another note attached to his collar and the note said, thank you for being kind to my dog. He lives in a home with six children, two of them under the age of three. He comes to your house to catch up on his sleep. My question is, can I come with him tomorrow? <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious me. That's why we say, you know, laughter is definitely the best medicine that you can have. And I think it's even prescribed by doctors. It makes you yeah. look good. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel confident. And um, somehow, you know, any problem in life, any challenge in life, it seems to just disappear with a good laugh. So I know, I know even I'm feeling much, much better after listening to Madam Jeannie's jokes and stories and lots of jokes from her joke file. I think those were very precious. And um, it's it was so kind of Madam Jeannie to share some jokes from her personal joke book, joke file to all of us. Thank you so much, Madam Jeannie. As always, you are a rock star. You are a versatile humor icon and we are honoring you with that. So congratulations to you and keep humoring people so that they can always remain um, mentally because that's more important. Physically, they will somehow manage, but being mentally happy and healthy is quite a challenge. But with your style and your panache, I'm sure, you know, the world will become a much better place to be in. So keep doing what you're doing. Loads of love to you. And um, next time I'll see you in a different hat, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, before we go, let me take a screenshot. Let oh, yes, go. yes, yes. Put our smile on. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to paste that over here. I'll make sure it came out. Okay, here we go. All right, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Yeah, we're cute. Okay, that, that came out good. All right. I enjoyed uh, being with you. Thank you so much for your kindness, for inviting me and for honoring me with the award and uh, all the nice things you said about me. And I, I really appreciate being part of the Chilparco family. And uh, thank you so much for including me. Thank you so much. I mean, hugs and loads of kisses to you, loads of love to you. 
Uh, you made me smile a lot today and I had tears in my eyes at a particular point, at two, three points, in fact, to be very, very honest. And this is what we are. We're real. We're, we're genuine from the heart and whatever we say comes out from the heart. And thank you so much, Madam Jeannie, for sharing it, for sharing your humor with us. I, I'm making us just feel so good, <laughs> so light, so rejuvenated, so refreshed. I don't know. I could go on and on, you know, in my adjectives for you. You're a darling. That's all I can say. At the end of it, you are a darling. And loads of love to you and to your marmalade, because I'm sure that marmalade is sitting in your lap. <laughs> Actually, he took, a, he took a hike outside, but uh, he'll be back. Okay, anyway, okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate we it. Need to, uh, we need to honor Marmalade also. I, that's a good thought, you know. We'll honor yeah. Marmalade in our next session. He definitely needs this honor because he, he also puts a lot of smiles on our face. I remember him coming on the last podcast. He was sitting on the table just, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, saying happy, wishing all of us a very happy Mother's Day. And I think that was very <laughs> cute. <laughs> so thank you so much and thank you to everyone who joined and even if you couldn't join us that's absolutely okay you can still watch the live and drop in your comments and also mention uh, the country that you belong from which part of this beautiful planet earth you belong and if you have any questions or you would like to make some kind of comments or you would like to mention your biggest takeaway from today's uh, podcast then please do that and yes um, you never know the surprises that come from Chilparco International and this one will come from Madam Jeannie and me so be sure to have your comments in place to write something to mention your takeaways takeaways and just keep smiling with that hasta manana till we meet again stay happy stay blessed stay beautiful stay bountiful and stay stay smiling always because that's the way you should be that's what makes you you unique unstoppable and unbeatable thank you once again madam genie loads thank of you. love to you loads of smiles to you and loads of good wishes to you bye bye Thank you. Stay tuned to Chilparko Podcasts, okay? We're going to be back with some powerful youth voices.